We are here with Jesselyn Raddick. Now, Jesselyn, you work for the Department of Justice until you saw what you considered to be injustice by the hands of the government. Since then, you have dedicated your life to helping whistleblowers. Is there any case in particular, perhaps maybe one that's not as well known, that you really were emotionally invested in? One that's not as well known as Edward Snowden's. Um, certainly Thomas Drake's and John Kiriakou um, and Peter Van Buren. Um, the, these are people who have all been either investigated or prosecuted under the Espionage Act. And it's a long list. William Binney, Kirk Wiebe, Ed Loomis, also all investigated under the Espionage Act. And my heart is very invested in these people because they all revealed fraud, waste, abuse, and illegality. And they all went through proper channels. And the government turned around and came back at them with a ferocity that I can't even begin to describe but unleashing the full force of the entire executive branch on one American citizen is a David versus Goliath struggle and it really it, it, it ruins people and that's the point of it to ruin people and to make an example of them so you are currently representing Edward Snowden you have been in contact with him traveling to Russia being harassed at the airports during your travels now I know it's a very sensitive issue but is there anything new any any updates you can tell us from your experiences that you could speak on? Um, in terms of anything new, yes, I would make sure I'm not going to fly through London in the future. Um, I think there's also a pattern that's developing where people who support Snowden, whether they are journalists or lawyers, people who are supporting him too closely, there's a clear pattern now that those people are starting to be harassed. And that is completely undemocratic and antithetical to a free and open democratic society, that we are going to harass the journalists and lawyers who are defending the most despised people in the country who are despised because because they revealed government secrets and illegality. Edward Snowden is doing remarkably well. I'm amazed at his resilience and he's very, he's a very grounded, centered, brilliant person who knows what he's about and he's very self-aware um, and he's doing fine, uh, especially given these circumstances that, that he's in that are simply extraordinary. Um, he's doing fine and he's warm and hilarious. He has a great sense of humor um, and I think most people here would really, really like him. What would you say to people in government right now that are considering blowing the whistle but yet they're afraid they're going to end up in a hole, you know, like private manning for the rest of their lives? What would you say are the proper channels someone would go through to blow the whistle on government? Sometimes the proper channels usually are not obvious. Most people don't know what they are. Um, so from, I would recommend that they come talk to a lawyer. It could be at my organization or a similar one that can explain to them what the proper channels are that are available to them and help them blow the whistle in a, in a safe way, in the most efficacious way possible. Um, people in national security and intelligence are um, the least protected, but so, certainly corporate whistle blowers, food whistleblowers, I mean all sorts of other categories of whistleblowers have a lot more protection. But kind of look before you leap and you can do that. The people always come in unfortunately after they've blown the whistle and are being retaliated against and it would be better to talk to someone and say, talk to a lawyer and say, look, here's what I saw, here's what I'm thinking of doing, how do I do this and not get caught in the crosshairs while I'm doing it. What is the difference between a whistleblower and a leaker? I'm glad you asked that. Um, whistleblowing reveals fraud, waste, abuse, illegality, and dangers to public health and safety, whereas leaks have no inherent public interest value. When Rich Armitage leaked Valerie Plame's name, an undercover CIA agent, merely to punish her husband, Ambassador Joseph Wilson, that was a leak. Leaks come out of the White House every day either to propagandize their own behavior or to make someone else look bad. Those leaks serve no inherent public interest function and have no public value. Whereas whistleblowing, often called leaking, is really not the same thing. You're disclosing government wrongdoing.
But uh, many of us voted in favor of Justin Amash and John Conyers' amendment last week uh, to, to, to defund this NSA scan, uh, spying thing. So a lot of us are very concerned about it. It's a very close vote. And I hope familiar any of you are with one of Demand Progress's founders and one of the shining lights of internet activism, Aaron Swartz. Yeah. He was a great friend of mine. He was the man who brought me into Demand Progress.